so much in store for you today. It is so much going on, man. Yeah, and the, the term I used in that song came back. Yes. That country song. Yes. You can be hurt by love, but healed by the, the same. same. Yeah. Time it is everything. <laughs> Time is everything. He said, "Time is everything." Come on, it is everything. Come on, preacher. We got, look, we got on, time. We got time this morning. Come on, we got time. I need you to say it one more time. <laughs> <laughs> when you say it. Anyway, but, but see, y'all get. Uh, maybe we got come. Uh, let's, let's calm down. We got yeah, yeah, let's say like we got. We got we, this is gonna be an interesting transition. <laughs> So, <laughs> yeah, look, is it? Maybe not, but because everything is about relationships, and and whenever we want to lean on relationships, we 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 try to uh, lean in and get our consultant, uh, who's v- very known in the industry and very knowledgeable in this space. Yes. And regardless, whatever whatever you're doing, well, relationship relationship is everything. You know what I'm saying? It could be work, it could be personal relationships, but this lady has to answer, and she's no. No, uh, uh, far into to this show, anybody else, she's been on many, many times, and she has a new book out, and we're going to have a talk about it. Welcome back to the Sports Shop author, uh, I don't know, uh, what does, a speaker. TEDx uh, speaker. Yeah, TEDx yeah, speaker. Yeah, 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 t- t- uh, entertainer, whatever yeah. you want to say. Yeah, she's back I, with I, us. I look on TV, I like, what's she doing on I, TV? I know, I know. <laughs> like, wow. She gets it done. Welcome back. <laughs> Elizabeth Overstreet, good morning. How you doing? <laughs> Okay, so you gotta get so so so. Let's talk about so you you. This not I mean you you've had a couple of books. So talk about this is falling the line of the family of books that you've written. Talk about yeah, it. Yeah. So first of all, you guys took me to church. I was like, dang. <laughs> says this Adele post the relationship because yeah. it felt like a little yeah. soul in there, it but did, anyway, it did. more yeah. soul than usual. Okay. Yeah. It's, it's sports shop church. <laughs> there you go. There you no. Go. So I I've been on this journey for a while. I've been doing um, relationship coaching and counseling for about eight years now. But more informally throughout my life, honestly, because I was that person people would come to to talk about their relationships. But, yeah, I've written a couple of different books. Um, My first one was called The Relationship Investigator's Guide uh, to Relationships because I would just sit and observe people. And I was very curious about, like, what connected to people, you know, to their relationships, what Mm -hmm. made us attracted to one another, what made relationships sustainable. And then my next book was Love You and He Will Too. So that was like part of my own journey too, because I grew up in this family with multi-decade uh, relationships. My parents were married 57 years, Wow. grandparents wow. 60 years, aunts and uncles 40 plus years. So they were showing me love could be possible. Mm-hmm. They were some good relationships. But then when I went out on my own and tried, I wasn't so great at it. <laughs> <laughs> so I wow. had to like learn and I was like, wouldn't it be great if you could give people kind of the relationship science or really practical mm-hmm. tips to get them to the right relationship because I was observing them around me and then I got to work with people and help other people get there. So mm-hmm. now I'm in my current book, which is called Love Can Be Messy. Um but you don't have to be because I think it's so accurate to like what's <laughs> that, going on today. That, that is current, like is that mean? That's that's like appropriate. That. I'll put it that way. Mm-hmm. Love, like love, that. love can be messy, but you don't have to be, huh? Yeah, because the thing is, the reason I think we f- are willing to take the risk with love is because the benefits outweigh the difficult parts. So even when someone's getting on our nerves, even when we're like, should I be with this person? There's that love part that keeps pulling you back in. But my mm-hmm. thing is like, we could be a little less messy with the way we form our relationships, right? <laughs> if we know what to do, we can set the right foundation. And that way we're not always being in the messy relationship. Mm, wow. Interesting. Oh, Very uh, interesting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll start it off by asking when you say messy, like give us some examples of mm. what, you know, how the relationship goes from, you know, if he loves you too and you love him back and then you're in love and how it can get to messy and then what we can do. Yeah. So that's a whole show. (laughs) But look, the reason we tune into the reality shows is we love to see like somebody in a situation that could be similar to ours in a way, even though it's much more escalated and extreme, but sometimes we're just not making good decisions. Like we're choosing people that we know are emotionally unavailable. And then we're like, why Aren't they emotionally available? But we, but they've given us, unavailable. but wow, they've given okay. us the cues up front, or we're yeah. building our relationships without building the Ooh. foundation. We're not taking the time to like get to know that person to really vest them out. But I always talk about like we talk about wealth all the time, mm-hmm. but there's relational wealth too. And if you don't build that up, if you don't build that solid foundation, 
then it crumbles. I think we see the you know the downfall of that. We see the divorce, mm. yeah. relate you know divorce uh, divorces that happen. I've been in a divorce, so it's difficult to make that decision. But sometimes, in looking back, we're like, I really shouldn't have been in that relationship. Exactly. So I just think giving people the right tools because there's a lot of fluffy things out here right now. There's people who have like who are a bit predators, saying the wrong things to people about relationships. So all of it, I feel mm. like, is kind of misguiding um, people. And then there's people that have good intentions around it. So I just want to get the right strategies to people so they could get to the right relationship. Outstanding. Wow. We're talking with Elizabeth O. Street, who's an author and relationship expert and speaker and so many other things. And more importantly, a friend to the show. So that's that's the best thing about that. You know, you just talked about your new book, Love Could Be Messy, but you don't have to be. And you were just talking about some of the things, you know, what, what that actually means, being messy and love and, and bringing those things into a relationship. When a per, If a person is just kind of out there that's saying to themselves, all right, I think I'm ready to get back into, you know, a, you know, relationship or getting back into the dating game. You know, what's probably the first thing that they probably should kind of do to just kind of ease themselves back into it? I think, like, the thing before you even jump out there is doing the shadow work. That's the work we don't like mm-hmm. to do. And well, that's, so, so what's shadow so work? So shadow, so, so, so shadow work is, like, self-accountability. Like, what were the themes that I kept you know, that kept recurring in my previous relationship. What were the things that people kept saying about me? I always say if you dated Uh, people, you heard similar things three times or more, there's probably something to it. So I think it's owning that piece first because if you're not clear on like where your gaps are, Mm -hmm. it's easy to go out and then get in the wrong relationship. But then I think it's knowing who you are. I think that's the most important thing and knowing what you want because then Mm -hmm. it almost gives you a roadmap. Mm -hmm. So you're not susceptible to just picking anybody. You're going to be more aware of like, okay, My core values are consistency, trust, um, honesty, loyalty, and then or or spirituality, whatever your thing is. And when that person shows up, if they're not aligning with those core values, you're going to feel stronger to like not Mm. keep going into that relationship or exiting that relationship. Man, we're talking to so much information. We talked to (laughs) relationship (laughs) expert Elizabeth on the street. And in in your work, has has there been a time where you got you know, of course, couple they they talking about. Do's and don'ts or whatever, and you, and you look at both of them and say, "Well, you know what? Just, that's not gonna work out." I have, but this you is may, the thing. Punch. <laughs> yeah, punch. I <laughs> yeah. absolutely because uh-huh. like love is not black and white; it's very gray. Um, mm. How we feel about somebody, why we're attracted to them, why we keep going back, whether it's a physical connection, whether it's like they just mentally in your head, like sure. you just you just desire that person <laughs> for whatever reason. Mentally, Those aren't, yeah, yeah, yeah. I like that. you know, it's, it's it's not always easy. So yes, absolutely. Free in your okay. head. <laughs> <laughs> that's a real thing. That is a real thing. Trust that's me. a real thing. So yes, I have worked with couples where I'm like, oh man man, there's a disconnect. But the thing is, I just try to talk people through it because we know ourselves pretty well. And I feel like you should be empowered to, to see it for yourself because it's more powerful. If I just say, mm-hmm. man, this ain't working, <laughs> you, you, you'll look at me and say, I know, but I want to be here. You have to make that decision. Mm-hmm. So what mm-hmm. has happened with those people when I've been in that situation is eventually sometimes they stay in it. And go through more pain, and then sometimes they finally say, "You know what? You're right. I see these things, but I'll keep reinforcing." Like three years ago, on this date, <laughs> we talked about this. It's still present. How are you feeling about that? And we go from there. You know, <laughs> she will tell you that. Well, you know, we were sitting here two years ago or three years ago, and you're still saying the same thing. Wow. <laughs> so we have some people chiming in, yeah. um, saying great conversation. James Ross and I yeah. are saying, you know what? We're back in the driver's seat again. He said, in the car of love. <laughs> which is a stylistic song. I like that. Um, so for James and others that are like in the driver's seat, ready for love again. Um, what would you say? I don't know if you want to say like effective top three effective strategies mm-hmm. or the top three red flags. I would say like top. OK, I could give you both um, okay. top strategies. Be patient, like be patient with the process. Dating is discovery. Mm. It's your time to get to know someone. There's no pressure. I mean, think about I always say, like, think about the relationship with your parents. When you came out the womb, your mom thought she knew you, but mm-hmm. she knew you to a certain degree, but not totally. But your mom and dad really got to know you once you were out of the womb. It took time, right? You went through your infancy stages, your toddler stages, your young preteen stages. Each stage was different. So, like, I don't know why when we get in relationships, even with our parents who know us well, they don't know all of our stuff, right? That's right. We we expect this other person to just figure us out. So take your time. 
um, see people where they are now, mm. not where you want them to be. That's that's good. That's good because we always think we can change them. Well, you yeah. know, sorry, if sorry, we say hang that, in there wait, long wait, wait. enough. <laughs> yeah. Say that one more time <laughs> yes, for the class, good. please. See people where they are now, not where you want them to be. Mm. If you can love someone wholeheartedly right where they are and you would be pleased if they didn't develop any further you're probably in a good spot this doesn't mean people don't change as you're in a relationship if you're in a good relationship you're both going to grow but if you go into it thinking well maybe if they would just like do this or do that they may change temporarily to appease you but Mm. if that's not who they are they're going to go back and then the other thing don't stay too long like when you see it's Ooh. not what you <laughs> Wow. <laughs> I feel like I need a song for that. Don't no. stay don't, too long. Don't stay too long. <laughs> like Gotta if, keep moving on. It's, it's a song, a song similar it's, to it's that. It's a song. Yeah, when you said that. that I, song, it's a song. I felt a song. I felt a song. I, I stayed too That's long. I got to yeah. move on. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta keep right. moving on. It's a song, I'm telling you. Yeah, it is a song. Yeah, Because when you said that, it's a song for that. Because yes. I feel like there's people that are good people that stay in situations that are tenuous or difficult for a long time. And then they're bitter. Mm-hmm. And then they're bitter towards everyone else after that. But really, it was the person they stayed with that they should have just exited that That's relationship right. that created this bitterness. And it's almost cut them off from other opportunities in the future. So when you see something's not working... Look, if you were dying of cancer, if you knew you were dying of cancer tomorrow, you would make some very different decisions. That's true. And the reality is we only have a finite. I'm not trying to go heavy, but we only have a finite you're time. There, babe. That's it. That's we only it. have a finite time on Earth. So if you're looking at it like you just got plenty of time, you really don't. This is your life. You don't get to do this That's over. Right. So treasure and be with the right person. So that Ooh, would be my Treasure and be with the right person. You, wow. You mentioned something. I, I just have to ask this question because it's, it always baffled me baffles me but what is a good indicator for people like when you, you've done the work you've done the shadow work and you're dating or you're talking to someone and you're trying to figure out if that person has done the work right what's a good indicator that that person may not be healed I mean they can say all the right things but they just may not be healed from the previous trauma that I think you'll see it like a lack of self accountability is a big one like yeah. if you have conflict with someone how they resolve through that conflict tells you a lot about their maturity so if they're attacking you but not the problem for example that could tell you like this person has some gaps here or if they mm-hmm. never can admit they're wrong mm-hmm. I mean that's the easier way uh, mm-hmm. that's that's a, that's a thing mm-hmm. if there's someone that's holding you to a standard of something they've been through, but not like holding you of the standard of where you guys are. That could be another sign. I mean, there's many signs. I, like I think it's how people show up in the relationship mm-hmm. and their willingness to correct behavior and their willingness to negotiate and compromise and be, you know, be be balanced. Mm-hmm. Any extremes are very, you know, yeah. telltale signs. signs yeah. But also looking at their patterns of like how they were can give you mm-hmm. indication of how they still may be. Like looking to see if they've broken those patterns. Oh, well, we, we I didn't bring my pen today. Yeah, bro. We can go back. But, 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 <laughs> God. We, thank God. We record this. Yeah, thank God. So, yeah. And you'll see it on yeah. YouTube. And, and by the way, if you listen, you'll see it again. And YouTube and here on our podcast. So don't forget yes. to subscribe and download our podcast. So, wow. Hmm. It's a lot of things you talk about in, as we bring in the, what we do each and every day, talk about sports. I mean, you could be helpful for some, uh, uh, you know, Organizations. There's some. There were some franchises that, that that can you use your help because get guys, in the portal. Don't stay too long. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta keep moving on. Gotta keep moving on. <laughs> or, or or you know we need some, some NBA teams of guys that you know that, that not. Yeah, they're not, I, they're so not I, working it closely together as as a basketball like the Lakers. Hell, you can go in there. Do, <laughs> but, you can talk talk but, to all of them. What, what about Ke- what about the fact maybe Kevin Durant's not healed from his previous relationship? Yeah, that's what it is. He's you know, not healed from Oklahoma City in the beginning. <laughs> yeah, like, Kevin Durant and and, and, and uh, Bradley <laughs> Bill and of course uh, Devin Booker like they coming to mess. I like Kevin, but he has, he does have a lot of feelings, which I'm not going to negate that because it's nice to see a man that's emotionally wait, 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 attuned to his feelings. He, he got about I, five burner phones and come on now. He has a lot of feelings, but but but. But because he has those feelings, if we were to dig into it, I don't know anything about Kevin, but I'd love to work with you, Kevin, if you're listening. Um, Somebody there, need to. There, there's, some hurt, there's some hurt there. Mm-hmm. You yeah. know, when people don't trust, there's a reason why they don't trust. And they just lean into it. And I mm-hmm. sense that from him because he's reading and he's curious about what people think about him because he is keeping up. He, he yeah. keeps he's keeping up, up, man. He keeps no ways. Yes, yeah. he does. Yeah. Yeah. He, he was a long list of I remember yeah. watching an interview with him and David Letterman, and I thought it was really interesting. He's like, I read the Twitter. I'm like, really? You care about that? And... He does keep up. He does care. 
but he kind of yeah. deflects it like that's he doesn't right. care. Yeah, but uh, but that's one you know he came out early and he said you know I, I don't want to lead anybody. I don't want to be a leader of any team. And I'm just thinking like, man, you're and, yeah. the biggest star on the team. What do you and, mean? And quite you honestly, that's part of the, the Achilles' <laughs> heel for the Phoenix uh, Suns. They had nobody want nobody wants to lead. lead. Yeah. And he, even we had uh, Golden State. I mean, well, Steph was leading, leading that team. Uh, KD was just there, great athlete, but he don't, he doesn't want to lead. That's interesting when you got relationships like and that. And all so, that talent. All, all that talent. He hadn't done the shadow work. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, is there or are there any um, whether it's a celebrity couple or sports couple that hmm. you follow? Ooh, that that's you, a good question. I you know it's so interesting you're talking about this. Um, you I'm follow tr- me. I follow you. you can <laughs> newly engaged. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know He's that. Congratulations. All right. He's done the work. He's done the work. Yeah. That's why I read the books. Yeah, that's right. That's why we read your book. Oh. So there isn't like a couple per se I follow. I do. There's some couples I do like. Like I like Grant Hill and Tamia. I mm-hmm. think they're a pretty interesting couple because they've really been together a long, long time. time. Yes. You don't hear any scandals in the relationship. I think he, you know, he, and he's he was high. He still is a high profile mm-hmm. person. She was too. They made it work. But I mm-hmm. always tell people like, be wary of couple. Go- you know, following couples or celebrity mm-hmm. couples, because you're only getting like a moment or a snapshot of what's going on, and we infer so much from a picture yes. or from like something someone said, but we are not in that relationship. Yeah, so the only people that really know what's happening in that relationship is the two of them. So I always tell people, create your own couple goals. You got to create the dynamics that work for you. That's right. People only show you what they want you to see. Exactly. We're talking to Elizabeth Street, who's written several books. The latest one is Love Can Be Messy, But You Don't Have to Be. Hmm, interesting. So tell people how they can find this book. Yeah. So if you guys are interested in reading the book, I think it's a low-key investment in mm-hmm. your relationship life, which we know can be costly. With you, If you get married, it doesn't work out. You have children. <laughs> So <laughs> this small investment <laughs> it's of, of not gonna be a big hit. <laughs> well, the small investment of helping you have healthy relationship tools can be found on Amazon.com. It can be found in Barnes and Noble and okay. you know many other uh, bookstores. But yeah, I just think it's a small investment to make in something that affects so many parts of your life. When you marry someone, we already know this. It, it affects you emotionally, That's right. physically, spiritually, sexually, yeah. financially. So yeah. like taking time to like dig into you know putting tools in place that can help you build a solid foundation. I think it's just really. Do important. we have time for one yeah, quick yeah, question? Yeah, yeah. Yesterday we had a long discussion on coming off oh, of this Rudy Gobert. He uh, game two. He missed game two because his girlfriend was having their first baby. Mm-hmm. So it's a big discussion. You know, it's playoffs. You know, like should he have missed that game to go see the birth of his son? Okay, well, one thing you can get back, one thing you can't, and I get that people will say, well, he can't get that game back, but there's going to be more playoff games that he will be in, right? Yeah. But he will never be able to revis- revisit his son coming into the world. So I think he made the right decision. I know it's controversial because he's a, it's in playoff time, mm-hmm. and I and I, I get all that, but I just think certain things, that's prioritizing okay. family. Well, let, let me throw just one little caveat to Go this. Ahead. Everything has been the same, but it's game seven of the world championship, of the finals. Do you... Play in that game where you go and be there for your for a child to be born. Which one you do then? I think it's a hard decision, and it depends on the person. But I think that if he's prioritizing his family, he's gonna pick his family, and that and that's what he's saying by him making that decision. He prioritized being there for his his child. Yeah, but th- and does it change girlfriend versus it's not his wife? Mm, that's they could question. break up tomorrow. That's a good question, but it's still his son. There you go. He gonna be paying for what I know, so he's gonna be there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, 18 years, 18 years. Okay, Kanye. <laughs> Kanye, I know. That's, that's a strong tune, isn't it? Yeah, it is. He stays too long. He stays too long. <laughs> got to be moving on. Y'all going to make a whole mix. I can see it. I know. You have no idea how this is going to turn out. It cost him in the end. <laughs> Stay too long. But well, you know, that's that's interesting yeah, that you yeah. say that. But but yeah, I mean, it, yeah, it's been a, a big conversation. People been talking about yeah. it, trying to figure it out. But that's a hard decision. I yeah. mean, and I'm a it's sports a fan. Decision. Just so y'all know, I love sports. Oh, I know but, you do. Good. but I like I I kind of that's a hard that's personal. And, yeah. But I get it because the that's, team was probably like, "Man, are you serious?" Right now? <laughs> I mean, but games, but but, but games, game seven, yeah. game seven, oh, what game you seven all your tougher. life. It's yeah. like, yeah. Oh, but Elizabeth, thank you so yeah. much for coming. Yeah. And, you know, you can come back anytime you want to. Give us some. Everybody needs advice anytime you want to give. Yeah, go out and get this book. Definitely go I'm, out and get it. I'm gonna I'm put my I'm gonna put my I'm gonna put my signed copy right there so everybody can see. <laughs> no wind the folder. <laughs>